Oh gosh, that was fun. Hi guys, are y'all awake today? Come on somebody, wake up Sarissa. Don't you shake your head, no girl. You know, come on somebody. Woo, yeah right, it's raining outside. So you know, you gotta come up over it sometime, punch it in the face, you know what I'm saying? Holy Ghost, if you're new here this morning, so sorry. Hi, welcome. We're fun. Um, no, sometimes you got to praise. I love Sean was talking about that, managing your internal atmosphere. But really, when we learn to manage, we know this, right? When we manage, we learn to manage our own internal atmosphere, then what happens? We can manage the external atmosphere, yes? So we can begin to influence, yeah? Influence, that's a big word in our day for all of you who are on Insta. Influencers, affiliates, yes? Y'all are like, what the heck is she talking about? It's okay, you'll get there. It's important, right? It's important that we don't... This has nothing to do with what we're talking about today. However, I just think it's important to be said because sometimes when the atmosphere... I guess we're doing some little, some training, like the little... Like back when we used to do in the ministry school. Let's go. <laughs> Sean, ta- Sean was exercising, helping y'all exercise that muscle this morning of praise, right? Without a worship team directing you. Same thing, internal atmosphere management, being able to influence the external environment is important. This is a major part of who we are, guys. We, all of us, me too, as my dad says, spiritual dad, um, me too. We, if we don't get this, we might as well sit down. I'm just being honest, right? Because we have got to learn the practice, the art of Holy Ghost is here. He is the one in charge of this environment. And then when I go out, I release that. If, I don't, if I'm not releasing him, what am I releasing? Or what am I allowing to overcome? Me, and then I succumb, right? I'm sorry, but this is a spirit realm conversation. Even today as we talk about it, Sherry hit it on the head. Today we're going to talk about pain. Actually, for the next several weeks, we're going to be talking about pain. And um, an important part of this conversation is that this is, we live in a more real realm, which is the spirit realm. Again, so sorry if you're new here today, welcome. I promise we're not crazy. This is the reality that we live in, right, is that we live in a spirit realm. The spirit world is much more real than what we think we dwell in. This is me touching my body firm. As sure as I know he's here, I know there are many other spirits at play. And we can partner with those spirits or we cannot. We only want one spirit. His name is? Thank you, Sherry, in the front row. Holy Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost. Okay, somebody. Okay, good. Woo, we got there. Sometimes you just got to keep your praise up in the midst of it. I want to jump on two things that Alden just shared. One is, um, you know, it's important, I think, in this season that we steward what's coming out of our mouths. Um, James said it this way. He, he had some really sobering words in chapter three about, um, about the tongue and, um, and how powerful it is to direct even the course of our lives, or it can set an entire region on fire. And, and, um, and he, and he said, he concluded that section by saying this, he said, he said, blessing and cursing come from, are coming from the same are coming from the same place. This isn't supposed to be this way because can you get bitter water from a, from a fresh spring and fresh spring from a bitter water? And, and, um, there's, a, there's a real important kind of call out from heaven in this season that we would become people of blessing. Yes, yes. To let no unwholesome word proceed from our mouth, but only such a word as is good for edification, for building up, according to the need of the moment, that it will give grace to those who hear. Turn to your neighbor, let's practice. <laughs> Turn to your neighbor and say, I bless you this morning. I bless you this morning. <laughs> Feel the challenge on this word, yeah. right? This is a challenge. It's a challenge. It can be a challenge, especially in today's day and age. The opportunity to speak is so before us, right? When in the world, if you didn't have some kind of platform, I hate to use that word, but it's real, right? If you didn't have somebody, some kind of platform, when in, the, in all of history's time have we had this much availability to just say things. Well, social media has Woo. given everybody a microphone. Correct, yes. Everybody gets a yeah. microphone. Right. So whereas in, whereas in the past, uh, the, the media was controlled by certain gatekeepers. Now everybody has their own, their own media. Correct, yeah. Everybody's, everybody's got their own page, and so everybody's got an editorial page. 
Y'all know you're posting. Come on, somebody. You know you're posting out there. What you saying? I think it's important, too. Uh, we, this doesn't have any, again, none of this has anything to do with what we're talking about today, but... Okay. Um, it's important to remember that this digital footprint will be with generations to come. So I think about that, like I want Aubrey to be able to, because I mean, look, your kids, your grandkids can go back and look at these things theoretically right now, right? And when they look at that, right? Because have you ever had a family member that either passed away or that you wanted to know more about? And you just want to hear stories. You want to hear the testimony of like their life, what you knew about them, all those things. Well, guess what, guys? This, in this day and age, this pla- these platforms are, are a piece of that. So when they go back and look, what will they see you saying? What are you sowing? right? Me too. So I'm thinking about that with my kids, for their kids. Like, I want that legacy to be good. And if none of you, if you guys aren't on social media, it's okay. You're, you're doing good because you don't have to worry about managing that right now. Well, so and I think, I, you know, I think one of the opportunities in this season is to find out what the real problem is. Like what's behind our anger? What's behind our fear? What's behind, what's behind some of the things that, that we're saying or posting or doing? And ultimately, and I'm going to kind of yeah, wind us, wind us back to yep. where, you know, where we're going to um, kind of launch us into this yep. morning. Because it's a big topic. This, this series is called Healing the Hidden Places. Um, and um, that sounds like a nice title, right? <laughs> um, but how many of you know hidden places are hidden for a reason? somebody. There are things we don't like other people to know. And, and, and there's, there's reasons for that. And there's, um, there's triggers that are associated with that. And, and oftentimes, um, can can we at least agree this morning that, um, that our, um, that our manner in fighting fire with fire isn't working? Hopefully, I'm just going to kind of plant that seed. Like maybe, maybe shouting at each other over social media isn't quite um, witnessing um, to the world as though Jesus were present. <laughs> I'm just going to propose that idea. So maybe it's time to actually um, pursue again the scriptures, pursue again the heart of Jesus, pursue again the person of Jesus, and find out, okay, is there another standard operating proce- procedure in the kingdom of heaven that maybe we've been missing? But I would even say that if we find it, if we're still seeing life through the lens of pain, rejection, fear, anger, bitterness, un, uh, unforgiveness, if we're still seeing things through that lens because of unresolved pain, yeah. right. then we still won't come out with the fragrance of heaven. Yeah. And I think I just want to say too, and this is something that we're going to, I think we'll probably touch on, but in case we don't get there, one of the things that we have to be mindful of is... Think about your own life and how much compassion, hopefully, you have for yourself in things that you've gone through, in traumatic experiences, any pain, any, any areas of growth that you're still growing in. We tend to have a lot more, um, I read a quote the other day, and I wish I had, I, had, I think I shared it on Instagram, but, um, you know, we tend to have a lot more, um, we, I wish I could find it, but um, we tend to have a lot more grace for ourselves, this is a Cliff Notes, like kind of a, a paraphrased version of this, than, or we, we compare our Man, I'm not going to get this right. We compare basically our, um, we give ourselves grace in areas that we would not extend grace to other people. We judge them on their behaviors and we judge us on our intent, right? Or our, or our inner. So that's kind of a paraphrase of it. But essentially, we don't extend compassion and grace a lot of times to other people. And in these areas. So when I look at this, even the scope of social media, as we talk about pain, the reality is, is that we all know our own experience, right? What we have gone through, what we're still going through, what we may go through, but we don't know someone else's history, pain, experience, what they're walking through right now, unless we sit down to talk to them. We're married, so we can be close on stage. We we can break the six foot rule. Um, But, um, so I just say that to say that this is a good starting point for us to remember as we interact with people that even, even some of the tough things that we are witnessing in the world today, I read the news sometimes and I weep of things that these kids are going through or adults. I mean, it's, it is rough, but everybody is coming. They're living from a place of the things they have encountered in their life. And most people are just, they're just doing the best they know how to do, right? Right just like you are, just like we are. But the reality is, is everybody has this, has had pain in their life at some point, past, present, and the reality is future, right? And 
as we navigate these things, as we're talking about the hidden places, first off, we want it to be a safe place that we can actually uncover these things to a safe, uh, to somebody safe in our life. Or, and these are, these are, when you think about the scope of pain, you have everything wide out here. Like my grandmother passed away and that was hard for me. You might share that on your social media. You might share that, that you lost someone you love all the way down to the things we don't like to talk about. I'm struggling with pornography. I, I mean, there's a number of things in that caption. I don't want to just use that one, but I don't want to single people out because we tend to hierarchical categorize sin which is wrong. The reality is, is everybody in the room has had probably some struggle they don't want the person next to them to know about. But if we can understand that it's really not about that sin as much as it is about the fact that we all have these struggles, we can journey through this with Jesus. And he wants to heal those places so that we can release hope for other people, right? And it's not about perfection. It's not even about um, immediate deliverance on everything that we struggle with, guys. It's not. It's really not. Now, there are times when God's going to, he may deliver us. But the reality is, is most of us are going to have to journey through the pain or the hurts on a lot of things. Um, And so we're going to be in process as we help others along in the process as well. Go, oh, baby. Jason Valentin has a phrase that really, really wowed me a few months back. Um, he, said, um, he said that when we violate our conscience, it's because there is a need that is trying to get met. When we violate our conscience, it's because there is a need that is trying to get met. And I'm hoping, because <laughs> this morning, almost, almost any time you get in front of a group of people, um, there's going to be at least some people who are in captivity and some people that, um, who are prisoners. Um, people who are in captivity are, are there are in bondage because of something someone else did. People who are prisoners are in bondage because of something they did. Fortunately, there's good news for both. Uh, while I'm continuing to talk, please turn or scroll to Isaiah 61, if you would, um, and, I'll, and I'll show you where that is. But I'm hoping that that phrase, when I violate my conscience, it's because there is a need that is trying to get met. I'm hoping that that phrase is going to release some aspect of freedom over someone this morning, because I think one of the things that I have seen both in my own life and in the lives of others since I've been on this side of knowing Jesus is we confess something, we repent of something, and then we find ourselves going back to that something. And so, and then, we, and then we've got really like hard scriptures like in Proverbs where it says like, like a dog that returns to its own vomit, a fool returns to their sin. And you're like, I'm a dog returning to my vomit. You know, like, and so you start to like, you start to degrade yourself because you start to wonder, why can't I just get past this thing? Why can't I just overcome this thing? And I want to propose to you that sometimes when, um, and that the Spirit of the Lord comes into a person's life, and some things, and many of us have, have, uh, have experienced this phenomenon, that some things just went. Like when the Spirit of God came inside of you, when, when Jesus became Lord to you, um, some things just went boom, like you just were done with potty what, mouth, right, right, an whatever. addiction, I mean, yeah. whatever, whatever it was. Alcohol, I mean, any, it could be any number right, of could things. be anything, a bad habit, whatever. And then other things you found stuck around. And I want to propose to you that what he did in the spirit in the first, he actually now wants to do systematically in our souls, yes. in our inner person. Right. But in order to actually have the same God work in our soul, it requires a transformation by the renewing of the mind. I actually have to receive the way that he thinks in the place that I think. Men, one brief caveat for you. Um, you and I are more prone to do this work by the head rather than the heart. And yet Proverbs says that as a man or woman thinks in their heart, so are they. So if you're used to, like, because Scott and Lisa, we, we met as a sermon series planning team, and we're like, yeah, we should do a few weeks on, like, the, the healing the hidden places. And if you are at all prone to do this as an intellectual exercise, it won't bear the fruit you're looking for. Correct. Because the places, so what's funny about that is all the women are nodding their heads at me right now. <laughs> Man, you can do it. We believe in you. You can do it. But here's the thing, guys, is we were sold a bill of goods somewhere in, in the course of history that said, 
um, I think, therefore I am. Do you remember that old philosophical quote? I think, it was, I think I, you attribute that to Descartes. Um, the problem with that is that removes our understanding of how to live from the heart and how to be connected with our body. And yet salvation is meant for our whole person, body, soul, and spirit. And so if I think, therefore, I am, then as long as I can conceptualize the right answer and think the right answer, I can, live to con- I can continue to live hellish even though I know the right answer. So guys have the biggest struggle. Guys, I'm telling you, this, is, this has been like a year and a half for me, learning how to actually like live, in my, like live from a place of my heart and not my head. I've been in my head most of my life. And yet this is... This is the journey that um, one, of our, one, uh, one of our ministry heroes calls it the 18-inch journey from the head to the heart. And actually learning to live from that place. And you may have to do something aggressive like this. And so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to tone my language because I know there's some kids present. Um, but uh, one, of the, um, one of the guys that I follow, he's a little edgy uh, on Instagram. He says he's had to train himself that when overwhelm comes, when, when, when he's not sure how to, how to deal with the, with the emotion and he would normally want to numb it and shove it, he actually has to tell himself, feel, mofo, feel. Like, has to, like, tell himself, like, stop, feel. Like, don't just push this under because it's uncomfortable. But, like, find out, okay, I'm feeling overwhelmed. I'm feeling pain. Why do I, like, I've had to train myself to ask myself this question. Okay, Sean, why are you feeling overwhelmed right now? What, like, why did that event, that person, that word, that betrayal, that trigger, why did that move you to this place of unrest? There's a lot of grace, too, I just want to say, for that process. Like, we're, by no means, you know, we'll probably use some, um, we may use some stronger language as we talk through some of this to urge us into the place of looking at the pain, right? But we also equally understand that, by nature, it's painful. <laughs> no one in the universe is like, yes, I'm so excited. Please trigger me. Please push on the spot that has hurt my whole life. Or please say that phrase to me because I was abused by that phrase as a child. I mean, nobody wants to do that. No one, not one person. But you know what I have found is that I do want jesus to whisper those things to me like i want him to come in and uncover help me to see because you know what guys he is you know this he is faithful to be gentle to be kind in the process to know us like he knows us better than we know ourselves right he knows us so well that he knows what what we can handle and in what ways he can push us a little bit in that, right? You know, we kind of come against that, that thing that God will never give us anything more than we can handle. The reality is, is that's just incorrect, right? God is going to, yeah, God. You can't, you can't find that in the word. <laughs> no, it's not in there. It's not. Um, but he's going to nudge us a little bit. And we talk, you know, one of the things that is important in this journey is, you know, and Sean spoke to this a little bit earlier, that sometimes we think we take care of something And maybe we have at a certain level of depth on it, right? But what we don't necessarily know, because we can't see inside and kind of understand all these things, um, there's there's really, it's deeper than we thought it was. And that's okay. So we're going to come back around. We, we often, as a joking manner, kind of in the leadership, like we'll talk about it as like coming around the mountain. We come around the mountain on this thing again and come around the mountain. And... Sometimes it's that way. God will, just like when you're healing something, right? Sometimes like you, you apply pressure and then you have to like let off for a little bit because you can't, you can't, you're, you're, you will just totally lose it. So God knows, okay, we're going to touch this for a little while in this manner until we can handle that. Okay. We deal with that layer of it, but we're likely going to come back at a certain point and, and go a little bit deeper on that issue. When he knows us, right? He knows us when he knows we are ready to press into that journey. So I spoke a couple, I mean, gosh, a couple months ago now, but the reality is, is nothing about this is very prescriptive, which really stinks 
Because we really in America like, please give me the four steps right. to how I heal my pain so I can go on with my life. What's the three point message? What is the three point the message formula? that will free me from all pain for the rest of my life and existence? And the truth is, is that's, that's just not, we're, what we're going to give you are maybe some tools, some practical ways of thinking about it. But when I spoke several months ago, it's become kind of this joke of like, Holy Spirit. We have to be in relationship with Holy Spirit, talking to him daily allowing him to speak to us because he is the one who does know and he is the one who's going to be able to speak to you. So much of my own pain trauma healing journey has been things that he has brought into my path, tools that he has brought into my path, resources, people, um, highlighted issues that he has brought into my path because he knows me and he knows you in the same way. Yay! Because that's, this is exciting. The exciting part of this, we don't like it, <laughs> is because we want the three-point message, but the exciting part is God knows you, yay, he's got the map for this. Yeah. And we have a leg up on this, you know, that we have a relationship with him, and he's going to guide us through. Think about the many people who don't have a relationship with him and don't have the guide map through. It begins to give you a lot of grace for people navigating this without the healer present. Oh, Jesus, right? All the more reason that we should celebrate. We have this intimate relationship with him. He's going to guide us along, and we have the good news, you guys. We have the good news. I want to I wanna jump on something Alden just brought up. Um, if you or you know someone, we can just pretend we're asking for a friend for a minute, right? Um, if you or you know someone who went um, uh, a, a large portion of their life. I, I actually have seen this a lot in the lives of young adults um, over these last several years where someone was abused or neglected or had some trauma in their childhood. And the grace of the Lord actually allowed them to not actually remember it. And then years later, 18, 19, 20, like I, I've, I've sat with a number. Some of you are nodding your heads because you've seen this happen or you've experienced it yourself. Um, that the pain and the remembrance of that thing comes back up in their life. And now all of a sudden they're, they're, they're like, oh my gosh, I, I, have, I forgot this happened. And what do I even do with this? I want to encourage you this morning. If it's coming back up, it actually, it, it's, it's actually the grace of the Lord to say, I protected yes. you until you had enough within you and in me to be able to handle this now to be able to actually now process out this pain. I'm so glad I got a smile from this side of the room. It's so beautiful. <laughs> that, um, that now the Lord is entrusting you with a process that says, okay, you're ready. I know this is going to be hard. But he said, he said, in this world, you'd have trouble. Take heart. I've overcome the world. Like you're, I, I need to speak this to someone this morning. You're going to get through it. I don't know who that's for this morning, or maybe it's online, but like, you're going to get through it. You're going to get over it. And I'm not saying like, please don't hear me say, get over it. I'm talking about you're going to walk through the process. It is going to be okay. And you're going to see his victory on the other side of it. Yes. But please, 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 once this stuff, once the Lord begins to start bringing things to the surface from could be years or decades ago, please don't ignore it. Please don't numb it. Please don't shove it. Please don't let it go. Allow Holy Spirit to bring that because in the safety of his presence, he will help you process it. Yes. And in that, and in that place, really, if it's coming up, if it's being sifted up, I have found nine times out of 10 in my journey, as these things come to the service, it's because God wants, he's teed us up to be able to, to, get, to let it go, process it out. Yeah of our body. Um, and I want to add on to what Sha some of what Sean is saying. I've done some study and some reading on trauma. By no means am I an expert. Please go do the research yourself. Read the books. Do that. There's many things. And, and it's not just Christian resources. There are a lot of super, super great scientists, people who have spent time. One of my favorite books that I have read um, is Waking the Tiger. Um, super good book if you are interested in trauma. One of the things that trauma experts will say is that, it, and this kind of goes... Um, against some of the things that we often hear is you don't have to just, is sometimes people avoid the pain because again, it's painful and they don't want to actually relive the experience. And to be very clear, even trauma experts have said that you do not have to relive the entire experience to be able to dispel it. What you do have to do is address the emotion that is stuck in your body. This is a big deal. This is the thing that we do have to deal with.
Because what happens, and Sean spoke to this earlier, is that so we, because we are kind of head oriented in our life, um, we have disconnected um, even our Christian walk a lot of times from our body right? Now we have um, spirit, soul, body. We like to talk this about our spirit. We like to even talk about our soul in the sense that the soul is our mind, will, and emotions in our person. Um, So we like to talk about that. We don't often like to talk about our body, but guess what? The body, the spirit, and the soul are all connected. The more you dig into this, the more your brain will explode. It is incredible. So when we go through experiences that are painful or that are traumatic, that energy, this is not a new age thing. This is real energy. Your body goes into fight, flight, right? That energy gets stuck in your body if it doesn't expel itself. So this is, I know this is like, woo. some of y'all are like, what is happening? Okay. But the truth is, and this is why sometimes this is a generalization. Women are more likely to be able to navigate some of these emotional things because they're more likely to use expressions like dance, movement, um, art. And then again, we've pigeonholed a stereotype of if, you know, uh, it, uh, men are gruff, tumble, this is the only thing. And there are aspects of that. Women are lighter, fem- more feminine. There are aspects of that. But there's nothing wrong with a man moving. Let's say it. Yeah, Brad. Woo! kicking somebody this morning. Somebody say, listen, I love, if you look at some of the churches, like they have praise breaks. That's movement. You're expelling energy when you move your body like that. Sometimes I've sit up here, I'm like, I just want to, I'm going to just praise. I'm just gonna set it. Because it gets stuck. That energy is there in your body and you, it gets stuck. So as a real life example for all the, like even in the men in the room, you don't have to learn ballet. No one is saying you have to learn ballet. What I am saying is that you put on some kind of music in your room, in your living room, and you can roll your head. I'm not kidding. Sometimes I was talking to somebody at the, um, up here praying for them at, during the, kind of the altar ministry time at the end a couple weeks ago, and I was telling her, like, sometimes when I put on music to move, because I can feel now that I've practiced it more, I can feel the energy in my body. I have to release it. I'll, it, sometimes it's literally this. It really, it's just my wrist. It's, I let my body kind of guide and, and say, so it's not, it doesn't have to be, here is my pirouette. I took ballet for a long time. Um, you know, it doesn't have to be choreographed. It doesn't have to look like anything conceptually you already know of. All we're doing is getting the energy out of our body. Again, I am not an ex, um, a, like a complete expert in somatic, you know, uh, you know, movement. But I just want to say that there is so much out there in this realm. And if we start to connect with our bodies, it's incredible. Do you want me to tell the thing about massage or you want to go in? Go Another example of this was, how many of y'all like to get a massage? Come on, somebody. I better see some men in here, too. My husband goes every month. Okay. Every month. We're getting back to it. COVID jacked us up. Okay. Relax, please. Pre-COVID, we had a good system. Um, Then COVID shut down, then we couldn't go, and my body was like, Lord, Jesus, help me. Okay, again, massages. Yes, we're good. Yes, okay, good. So uh, I had a massage. I go to a place, uh, actually, I go to a place in Ithaca, and I've been going to them for a couple years now, and one, I have a couple different practitioners that I usually work with, and uh, depending on who's available, and this one girl, I, I have always really liked her. She's very aware of certain things in my body. I don't have time to go into a lot, um, but she was massaging one day, and she said to me, do you mind, I'm giving the Cliff Notes version, if I work, have I ever worked on your psoas? And I was like, what's that? <laughs> no, Raise your hand if you've never heard of the psoas. I don't. Because I had many not. Many right? Never heard of it. Come on. Y'all have heard of the psoas. Come on. Who has not heard? Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Chuck. Good. Okay. So um, Chuck's like, no, I don't even know a clue what you're talking about right now. So, so I said, no, you haven't. She said, well, okay, well, it's in here. It's basically, the, it's kind of like the back, your back muscles, but you access them through the front. So it's not your stomach. However... As soon as she started pressing on my stomach and, and massaging those muscles back there, I started weeping. And I know enough about my body, soul, spirit connection. I know enough about healing that I knew immediately something in the spirit was happening. Now, when I go to get massages, I always am talking to Jesus through the whole experience because I typically know there's stuff he wants to get rid of. Sometimes 
I get a massage and I actually have memories of experiences, like painful experiences when I was a kid or things that hurt, or sometimes they're just random thoughts. And I'm like, oh, must be, I just got to work that out. I just release it to you, Jesus. Um, again, all this is stuck in your body. I know this is weird, but it's true. Um, and so she began to massage us and there was nothing specific, um, but I just was, I was weeping. So I come out of my massage and I'm like, I don't know what that was, but that was serious. And I look up on, on the internet, just a simple Google at the point, because I was like, what just happened? So as the muscle that stores all of the emotional trauma in our body. Stop. Stop it. This is what I mean. God is amazing. He is incredible. I'm so sorry. I'm yelling. Sweet thing. I'm sorry. Um, he's amazing. He designed our bodies this way, you guys. So even the last time when I went, I had a massage or whatever, and I said, this is really, this part of my body is really hurting. She said, yeah, I think it's your psoas. I think it's your psoas. Ah, so, but I just say that to say I was amazed because all of that emotional Trauma was stored emotionally somewhere in my body, and it had to just get released. Again, sometimes it's not actually experiencing the actual experience from front to back again. It's just that emotion is stuck in my body and just has to get expelled out so that I don't, it's not trapped there anymore. Y'all still okay? Y'all with me? I promise this is Jesus and not something weird. Promise. He designed our bodies. He created us. Go ahead, babe. Put, put some scripture around it so no, people okay. will trust us again. It's okay. I, no, you're doing great. I, I think, um, you know, when, we were, when we, were, we were figuring out who to have speak this morning, um, you know, I said jokingly, I was like, I'll bring the more doctrinal perspective. My wife has all of the experience to, like, back all this stuff up. Um, uh, but I can, hear, I can hear the question in the air, why are we talking about this? So let's, let's take a look at the scripture, and, and, um, and we'll kind of unpack a couple pieces here. Um, the Spirit of the Lord God is upon me because the Lord has anointed me to preach good tidings to the poor. He has sent me to heal or to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives, and the opening of the prison to those who are bound. I'm going to fast forward just for now down to verse 3, to console those who mourn in Zion, to give them beauty for ashes, the oil of joy for mourning, the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness, that they may be called trees or oaks of righteousness, the planting of the Lord that he may be glorified, and they shall rebuild the old ruins. And it goes on. Okay. One of the things that, that Dave, our, our prophet, has sniffed out is what I, what I affectionately call the journey concept um, and has brought language of that we need to, as, as we gather and as we come alongside each other in this house, that we're to help facilitate each other's journey from triage to healing to purpose. Isaiah 61, 1 through 4 actually gives us a, a really great progressive roadmap of triage to healing to purpose. The Spirit of the Lord comes upon an individual who is living in purpose, by the way, to preach, to breathe forth, to release a sound, a ruach, a pneuma, a, a specific heaven-sent sound that is actually meant to set people free. Now, it's interesting that Jesus quoted these very words when he got up and he inaugurated his ministry, he quoted these very words, and then the next thing he, he, he does is he goes and starts healing people's bodies. It's very interesting because there's nothing in there about healing people's bodies. And yet, the outgrowth for him was, I'm going to start making people whole now. I'm going to start releasing a word that's going to set people free and anybody that is physically ailing, emotionally ailing, or spiritually ailing is now going to get what the, um, what the old Greek word is, sozo. It's where we get our word for sozo ministry. Right. Saved, sealed, healed, delivered, set free, all of those things. It's a total mind, body, spirit work for the individual, for the target. Whole person, all pieces. And some of you live and work in target-rich environments, but you wonder sometimes why your witness isn't effective. You're still either in triage or in healing. And so here's, here's Isaiah prophesying forward that there would be a day when someone and someones 
would come and they would release a word to set people free. Do you remember? Um, and I, some of you have heard me say this before. I only repeat it because we need to keep repeating this. It says, he has sent me to heal or to bind up the broken hearted. Slow down for a second. Let's not rush. Broken hearted means your emotions are jacked up. It means someone in your life, their emotions are jacked up. They're not, they're not okay on the inside. Years ago, I, I started replacing the, um, the words, how are you, with how's your heart. I can't even begin to tell you how many more people will actually tell you more about their life if you say, how's your heart, than if you just say, how are you. Because how are you is the script that we run to, to say fine, or okay. <laughs> right, or, Manny? Or good. if we want to be I'm religious, good. bless God, brother. He's good. Is he good? He's good all He's the time. Good. I'm good. He's good. Yeah. Good. And so, so we do. So we do either do the religious dance or we do the social dance. But if you say, "How's your heart?" Now somebody actually has to look inside. And there's a lot of broken-hearted people. I think Dave, Dave told us recently that um, I think either depression or suicidality amongst young people has gone up three thousand percent since COVID. Like the world is hurting. He's still the answer. And now I'm gonna now I'm gonna really make it real. And his answer is us. Like he did everything he's gonna do. And while he's interceding for us, like while he's like the master intercessor in heaven, like he's he's looking down. I can't remember if it was Jeff this morning. Somebody in prayer this morning was like, no, maybe Scott. I said, what if God's waiting on us? Guys, God is waiting for verse four, but he's but he wants to like he wants to do verse four where like it's the good stuff. Let's rebuild the old ruins. Let's raise up the former desolations. And he's like, I need you to do the internal work first. Come on. Because do you notice it's the healed people that heal cities. It's the people who've processed pain. No, well, you, there's nothing in here about process. It's, it's about liberty to captives and opening a prison to those who are bound. Yeah, the first thing is you gotta know what's jacked up. You gotta know what's broken. You gotta know, you gotta know. You gotta, we have to know, we have to have an innate sense of like, what's still broken in here? What's still shattered in here? That word brokenhearted can also be rendered shattered mind. Some of you in here, some of you listening online, you've dealt with mental, mental health issues for large stretches of your life, and I'm telling you, the gospel is for you. I told one of my students recently, like in my voice and sound discovery class, I said, I, she, she said, I just don't know if that story, if that Bible thing is for me. I don't know if that's attributable to me. And I turned around and I said, if the, if, the, if the good news isn't for the broken, I don't know who it's for. If it's not for the ones who've experienced pain and trauma, I don't know who it's for. I don't know what we're doing then. Hi, babe. Say it. No, oh, I'm about to, whoo, there's a praise break right there. Oh, my gosh. Uh, so, uh, you know, I, I want to just go through a couple of those things. Sean just mentioned his voice and sound intensive. Uh, he has many students. That's a certain kind of special lessons that he teaches um, to, to unlock your voice, but not just singing. This is a, I mean, Sherry's been through it. There's a number of people who have taken uh, lessons with him in this manner, and it's a whole person experience to help do some of the things that we're talking about. And that's not necessarily just a plug, just to go, go buy the thing, do the thing, but I'm saying there are many tools that will get you going and forward on the journey. Sozo, Sean talked about. We have a Sozo ministry here. If you are interested in experiencing some of those things, please, counselors. By no means are we saying like, go isolate yourself and try to figure this out. There are many, 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 many people who want to help. Let them help you. We don't have to do this alone. This is a journey that we get to walk with Holy Spirit, but there's so many resources now. Um, Jason Valentin is a great voice to follow if you're on social media. He's super, super, super. Um, go find him. Go find him on social media. He's got great resources on emotional healing, on pain, on all of these things. We have to look at these pain areas in our life. We come from an experience in, in, this, in our culture where we just feel, we just kind of think, if I don't look at it, <laughs> then it will just go away. No, it will not. <laughs> it will not go away. We have to deal with it um, so that, like Sean said, we can then be empowered to go out and release that, this message of hope. We've got to deal, and everybody has stuff. There's no shame. 
There is no shame. Everybody, your parents were doing the best they knew how to do. You're doing the best with your kids that you know how to do. They're going to do the best. That's why if the more work we do as we then pass that on generationally, the, you, you're changing generations just by that alone. And if you're not married and don't have kids, that's okay. You might know some neighbor kids. Your sister might got some kids. You know, you might go teach a Sunday school class. There's kids out there. You know, um, there's many avenues um, to see this get expressed. You don't just have to have a platform that then will, you know, like a stage to then release healing to the nations. There are many ways to impact culture. Um, and we just, we get the opportunity to do it. But we've got to do the work, like Sean said. Yeah, and I think, uh, you know, Alden said this earlier, you know, we're, we're not experts in this, but we have submitted our lives to experts, whether that's been in counseling, um, you know, the, probably the three most common things that I use on a regular basis um, for my own process into healing and wholeness is counseling, um, Sozos, our Sozo ministry is excellent here. Um, and prophetic deliverance. Those are those are three just, and those are just resources in our house. Um, to say nothing of some of the other ones that all been. I probably do more modality related yeah. ones that but are like, more reading, study, right, movement. We've, we've read you know, things. But, yeah. We've experienced things. We've gleaned things. But and all that to say this: this is not a process that is only done by the Lord. Like. The number one tangible thing, if, if I were to deposit something on everyone's calendar this week, it would be simply these words, show up. Like there's a, there's a, there's a physical intangible decision. There's a choice to be made to show up to our own journey into wholeness. It's not something that like, okay, the Lord revealed that there's this pain or he revealed that there's this trauma and be like, okay, so he's gonna do all of the work. And, and so meanwhile, we sit around and we wonder why it gets more and more despair and more and more depressing because every, I, I'm trying to be careful in this season to not use words like everything and never. Most often, I'm finding that the transaction from heaven to earth is what Scott would call a collision by grace through faith. And see, grace is what he does, faith is what I do. And it's always in the collision of those things, finding out he wants to heal me in this area. He wants to preach good news in this area. He wants me to believe a truth and not a lie in this area. And I actually have to choose. I have to bring myself to that place of decision that says, I'm going to choose to believe even though my emotions say nothing uh, like nothing like that right now. And I'm going to choose to believe even though I'm not even sure if I have faith for you to heal me on that level. And so, um, so the number one thing I hope we as a community begin to take on is that we're going to come, we're going to show up, we're going to bring ourselves intentionally to our own process. I want to say too that God is big enough, right? Because we're going to transition here in a minute to some prayer time. And I want to say we have some phenomenal people who will pray with you. It will be confidential. It's not, this isn't, this isn't, you know, uh, putting you on blast. I, I just want to say that there is nothing there is no sin, there is no struggle that God is surprised by, nor does he have shame for you. There are none. Part of this as we're talking about healing from the hidden places are things we want to hide because they're shameful. They're, I mean, guys, it's so, look, sin by nature is not in the nature of God but he's not surprised by it, nor is he embarrassed by you. He has healing and hope for us, all of us, all sin. I just wanna say that because we rarely talk about some of the ones that receive a lot of shame in the community, right? Um, I mean, real deep. I just, I just wanna say that there are, God is here to set free. He's here to walk the journey of what what was broken in you to begin with that caused you reaching for xyz okay so i just want to say that because when we're talking about hidden places we understand that it can be extremely scary but once some of the most powerful times of healing for me personally you would not believe the amount of freedom that comes when you what i like to affectionately call get it out of your body 
when you just conf the Bible says confess your sin one to another, right? So, so in that process, you would not believe sometimes the enemy gets us trapped here. Like, this is so bad, this is so bad, this is so ugly, this is so horrible, I'll never get free from this, um, and uh, they can't know this about me, this will ruin me, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. You would be amazed at when you just confess that to somebody who's going to pray with you, stand with you in that place, immediately, already, how much breakthrough you experience, because the enemy's not using it to try to hold you captive anymore, right? Because one of the biggest lies, that, right, is like, you can't tell them that, because if you tell them that, you can't tell God that. God, God doesn't want to be close to that. All those things. So I just want to say that as we gear up for this time at, up here with these people who want to pray for you. This can really be such a monumental time for your heart to, to get prayer, to get healing, to get help and wholeness. I'll start you on some of these journeys to, to get it out of your body and let it go and let God come in and heal that place. Yeah. <clears throat> I want to. Um, I want to invite some specific kind of captions um, that, as we were as we were kind of going through our notes last night, that I felt like prophetically the Holy Spirit was just touching. That I th I think He wants to inaugurate a season. Whoever you are, wherever you are, if you're watching it this morning, um, wants to inaugurate a season of healing for you. So even if what I'm going to mention is not like in this list, you're not, you're, what you're going through is not on the list. That doesn't mean he doesn't want to touch it. It's just these are the things I heard him emphasizing. Um, but I also want to say before I jump into this that um, some of this process will require, for those of us that say yes to this process, and showing up to this process will require hearing and receiving some things we might not want to hear. And one of the things that the Lord's taught us over the years is that humility is the soil for transformation. The Apostle James said, with humility, receive the word implanted, which is able to save your souls. And so in this process, whether it's a counselor, whether it's a spiritual advisor, some kind of uh, a coach, uh, a book that you read, when, and I, and I say when, not if, when you come across something that you're like, I don't know that I wanna do that. I don't know that I believe that. Be slow to cast that aside because it may be the very thing Holy Spirit's saying, no, 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 this, this is your point of breakthrough right here. If you can receive this word, if you can receive this challenge, this place, the, the humility. And so like, I'm, I'm deliberately kind of like bringing us down to this place because now I wanna, now I wanna just speak a spirit of gentleness over your hearts this morning. Because this is a process we, we've gone through in our own lives individually and together. This is a process that, um, that you can be fully assured that the good shepherd shows up in this process. You can be fully assured that the Jesus who said, uh, my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Come to me, all you who are weary and heavy laden. I will give you rest. You can be rest assured that's the Jesus that shows up in this scenario. That's the Jesus that shows up when we're processing these things. And so I just want to share these. And I don't say these flippantly, but I, I just felt like the Spirit of the Lord was highlighting these last night. And, and if, if you find this, and, and if you find this was something that you experienced, I want to invite you to receive prayer this morning. I'm telling you, Alden said it. Um, all, anybody who's going to be here praying for people is going to be a safe place in terms of confidentiality. And this is a judgment-free zone. We're like Planet Fitness. There's, there's absolutely no judgment or condemnation for anything you've gone through or that you've experienced. So here's just a few. Abuse from childhood. That can be verbal, that can be physical, that can be sexual, that can be, I mean, mental. Abuse from childhood. Current domestic abuse or outbursts of anger. Now I'm gonna speak for a minute to the gender that that's likely to come from. If that's you, I have no condemnation, I have no guilt for you. But there is good news because there's good news for captives and there's good news for prisoners. Yes, so if is. you find, and again, Anybody who is a perpetrator of domestic abuse or outbursts of anger, again, the issue is not the evil. The issue is the pain. Now, I get it. Like, there, 
there are going to be times where legal situations are going to have to take place in order to have healthy boundaries firmly in place. But for the moment, I'm speaking as a shepherd to your hearts. I'm speaking as a father to children and, and as a brother to brothers and sisters that if you find yourself in that caption, begin your healing process today. Begin your transformation process today. Here's another one. Eating disorders. This house actually, I believe, has an anointing for breaking eating disorders. I think we have a specific assignment for it, and we've seen a number of women in particular. I don't know how many men have dealt with this, but we've seen a number of women in our house, in this church, actually get major healing from eating disorders. So you can believe that you're, um, one, of my, one of my friends who was going through that, she said, I determined not to become a statistic. Last two are betrayal and bereavement. Betrayal and bereavement. So if this has been a season for you or the Lord is highlighting to you where you have seen life through a lens of betrayal, that person, people are always going to leave me or rejection, abandonment, because you've been betrayed, I feel like the Lord wants to do a healing work with that. The other one is bereavement, just a fancy word for you've grieved the loss of somebody who's passed away. And that has left you in a place of despair. It's left you in a place of confusion. Um, and I feel like the Lord really wants to begin a work that actually moves you through that place. Um, it says that blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Mourning is something, mourning is different from grieving. Grieving is what you feel. Mourning is actually what you do. It's actually the processing out, the verbiage, the, the verbalizing of this is what I'm going through. And it's in that place that the comforter comes. Yeah. And the last thing I just want to add to that before we call, I've actually, can we have the prayer team come? Yeah. Um, is that if you don't fit into one of those boxes, but you feel Holy Spirit nudging you, please, 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 just come and just share that with the team. I'm not really sure. I just felt like Holy Spirit was kind of, I, I could feel it in my chest in this area. I could feel like I was just supposed to come up and receive prayer today. Some of the most um, impactful times for me, even in my own personal healing, have been just, I'm not really sure why I'm crying. I'm not really sure why I need to move right now. I'm not really sure why. I'm not really sure even what Holy Spirit's bringing up and we're moving out, but he's doing a work and I want to partner with him in it. So don't walk out of here today. If you're feeling that, but you don't fit in one of the boxes per se that Sean just mentioned, um, just know that we're here to pray with you also. So, uh, so let's just pray. Holy Spirit, we just thank you. We thank you for your faithfulness to us. Um, your kids. God, I thank you that you are for us. You are always for us. You're for our healing. You're for our um, victory. You're for us to go out and change nations, change cities, change communities. Father, I thank you that you are for us to be healed on the inside out, healed so that we can change our internal atmosphere to change the external environment that we are placed into wherever we go. And Father, I thank you for the fact that you are a gentle dad. And God, that may have not been the experience of every person in this room, Father. And so we just thank you that you are, um, you're kind in that process as you reveal yourself, as you open yourself up um, to others, God, to, in the, to those, uh, your kids in the room. God, I just thank you that as the experience unfolds with healing, Jesus, I thank you that you are present and that you are not afraid of, of the things that we have to confess or we want to move through. Um, you are with us every step of the way. I thank you that we get to do this with you, Jesus. And if uh, there's anyone in the room today who has not embraced you um, as their Savior, Jesus, I just ask that you would come and speak to their hearts today. We just thank you, God, that you reveal yourself as the Savior of the world, the King of all kings. I just, we just, uh, we exalt you today in this place. We love you. We thank you for the work that you're doing today, uh, but, but all through the week as we process through these things. We just love you. In Jesus' name, yeah, Sherry, would you come? Yeah.